on EA Sports. Straight ahead, we've got what should be an interesting matchup between the Los Angeles Rams and the Seattle Seahawks. With that, let's get up to Seattle. Standing by at CenturyLink Field, here are Brandon Godden and Charles Davis. Coach, it is a sound like no other. When they raise that 12th man flag here in Seattle, we just heard it, and that means it's time for football at CenturyLink Field. This crowd, as we've come to expect in recent years, as loud as any in the NFL, and they get even louder when their Seahawks are introduced. We're ready for football as the Seahawks get set to do battle with the Los Angeles Rams. Brandon Gordon, Charles Davis, happy to be with you. And Charles, we've got two teams who know each other extremely well. These division games, they tend to be battles. People scout like crazy in this league, but no one scouts more than within the division. Because if you win your division, you're automatically in the playoffs. That puts extra emphasis on these games, and they can't wait to get at each other. Zerline now. He'll handle the honors to get us started. And off we go from Seattle. This is fielded a couple yards deep. And the decision to bring it out, a good one as he's up a yard or two shy of the 30. So out come the Seahawks now for their first possession. They're led onto the field by their quarterback, a man who's made quite the name for himself in the NFL, and that's Russell Wilson. And when I think of Russell Wilson, I think not just of the big plays that he's made, and those are considerable, but when they were made. Fourth and 26 in a Big Ten championship game against Michigan State when he is with Wisconsin, a big completion helped lead his team to a victory. A big fourth down throw for a touchdown in an NFC Championship game against the San Francisco 49ers. When the chips are down, Let's this guy plays at a big level. Let's go, D Titan. This is the Oklahoma State alum, Chris Carson. Only a couple for him there on the game's first play at second down. And one of the big bodies helping out this offense is your boy, Upati. And all he wants to do is have running plays call, fire out, and smack people. The last run good for two. Here's second and eight. Now it's Wilson out to his left. He'll try and run it. He turned that into a nice game. Gets him eight yards closer for third down. They brought the blitz that time, and I thought they were going to get to him, but instead he flipped it on its ear and ended up picking up positive yardage. I thought he was dead to rights, but you are exactly correct, sir. Able to turn that into a positive game. An early test for this defense. Here we go on third and inches. He'll find Metcalf. And he'll lose yardage on the play back at the 37-yard line. A loss of a yard, and it brings up fourth. And never good on a pass completion there to go the wrong way. Lost yardage. No, for some reason, it seems to work better when you throw it downfield or you can move the ball downfield running it that way, doesn't it? But in this case, if you're the defensive guys, you're energized, executed well, and you caused a lost yardage play. That's going to feel good and look great in film. On fourth down, ready to punt, Michael Dixon. JoJo Natson back deep for the Rams. And a nice job here to down this one right on the five-yard line. They decide against going for it on fourth and one, maybe to the dismay of their offense, but hey, a nice consolation prize down inside the five. Nice consolation prize indeed. So maybe the offense is upset, but they show confidence in their defense by punting it away. Here's a Los Angeles offense as they get set to take possession. Now the first carry here for Todd Gurley. And he's going to be taken down here with a penalty flag on the field. Offense. 
So this will be accepted as it moves the offense backwards. complete to Cooper Cup, and he's going to get a solid gain of nine before being brought down second and right at a yard. So not quite a first down just yet as they come up on second and less than a yard. Here's the first carry now for Todd Gurley. And they'll bring him down here right around the 17-yard line. Second and inches is oftentimes an invitation for an offense coordinator to take a big shot downfield because he feels like he can come back on third down and pick up the first down. But sometimes you just don't want to break tendency. Stay with what you are, stay with who you know, and go get the first down. That's exactly what they did. Gurley again here on first down. And he roams across the 20 to the 24-yard line. It's a seven-yard carry to set them up with a second and three. It's a game of seven. Brings up second and three at the 24-yard line. That's the end of the first quarter. No, no score, score after one on EA Sports. A good run, got seven on first. Here's second and three. Here's Gall. Throwing over the middle, and it's incomplete. Brandon Cooks, the receiver he was going after, and it's third and short. Not sure what happened out there, but it looked like the timing was a little off on that throw. Well, you know I'm a defender, so what am I going to say? Great defense. And darn right. They did something to disrupt that time. So the incomplete pass on the last play, and that leads us to a third and three. A shotgun snap for goal. It's complete. This is Todd Gurley. And he's going to have the first down yardage as he's down at about the 30-yard line. It'll go as a gain of six that time, and it moves the chains as well. As you know, so many things in the passing game are based on yardage. Sometimes it's just based on timing, and that's what we saw right there on that play. Third and three, just get the ball right to the receiver. Is the hitch route. And tell us, what is the hitch route? Yeah, just take really one step, like you're driving off the line of scrimmage, get the defensive back on his heels, get the ball out to the receiver, and he does the rest. On first down, it's gone. And his throw here is incomplete. He was looking for Todd Gurley, and that'll bring up second down. All right, that one fell incomplete there, but the best quarterbacks, they'll miss on 40% of their throws somewhere in that neighborhood, similar to a great hitter in baseball who's going to fail seven out of ten times and still have a great year. In this case, you want perfection, but way better that it hits the ground instead of going to an opposite color jersey. Now Gurley. They get six here after the incompletion, and it'll leave them with a third and four. That's a really good job right there. Just kept stringing that play out, pushing further and further towards the sideline. Really good fundamentals by that defense. He was trying to put his foot in the ground and turn up field. He just couldn't. No, they really had a picket fence in front of him. No room to find to get upfield. From the gun on third down, gone. This is caught. It's Cooks. And he's got the first down yardage before he's brought down at the 42. That one good for seven as this long drive continues and the chains move again. One thing you're hoping for when you run drag routes, you're able to hit a receiver in stride and he can pick up a lot of yardage after the catch. But in this situation, the defense was effective, able to stop him before he could get a good head of steam going. Second quarter, two minutes to go. Tie ball game. A 
reminder coming up at halftime, we'll check in with our Jonathan Coachman. He'll have highlights and analysis of the first half, and our highlights will likely be on the defensive side of the football here. Scoreless game. Goff's throw here finds Woods, and they're well past midfield, just a yard or two shy of the 40. It's a gain of 15, and the Rams have a first down. First down now, but that clock rolling. Now golf on first down. He's going to dump it off to Gurley. A gain of four on the play, and that'll make it a second down. So many times you hear today's NFL described as a space game. Get your best players into space with the football in their hands. That's why sometimes you just swing it out to your runner, get him out in the flat, and let him have a chance to make people miss an open field. Four yards on that last completion, so that sets up second and six. Goff now looks to throw. And that one got tipped, kind of threw everything off. It brings up third. Well, we've seen him catch a few passes out of the backfield in the first half, unable to connect on that one. Certainly seems like getting him the ball out of the passing game, though, is part of their game plan. It certainly is because he catches it well, creates a mismatch. You're going to cover him with a linebacker, a corner, a safety. They feel like he can win every battle. Now a third down throw, but it misses the target incomplete. You and I watched film yesterday, and you told me to watch his feet. Well, for whatever reason, his footwork just looked off on that throw. And you always love it when an ex-defensive back talks quarterback mechanics, right? Well, but you're good at it. Well, I, I try, all right? I don't know how good I am, but it doesn't take much to tell. His mechanics are off a little bit, exactly what you described. Footwork, that led. Oh, they flip it to the kicker. He looks like he's going to throw it. They're not going to get it. They try to move the chains with a surprise, but it's a turnover on downs. The Seattle offense now set to come back out on the field. And a three and out on that first drive. We'll see if they can do better here. They should have a better opportunity because the nerves should be settled now. That first series, everybody goes out a little extra emotion. So now they get a chance to go back out and say, okay, now we're into the game. Let's go play and play as best we can. You almost get a mulligan then on that first drive? Sometimes it absolutely serves that way. You get a second opportunity. Nothing big happened. But then again, you didn't commit any mistakes either. Off you go. Here's Wilson. And it's hauled in by Nick Vanette. Now the Seahawks going to use the first of their timeouts as they get the stoppage with just under 50 seconds remaining in half number one. Facing a second and two after that last catch, good for eight yards. Wilson. And the catch is made here by Tyler Lockett. First down, Seattle, 16 yards the game there. An ex-teammate used to tell me all the time, I hate experienced quarterbacks because no matter what, you really can't hide what you're doing. And I think that right there, he knew right away where the blitz was coming from, where his primary guy was going to be, and he ended up going to a secondary target for a nice game. I was just going to ask you, that wasn't the primary target. He's so good at that, isn't he? I think he knew right away that he wasn't going to get to his primary guy. I think he read that as soon as he got to the line of scrimmage, knew where the pressure was going to come from, and said, ah, I know how to beat that. And that's what he did. Now it's Wilson, and that is incomplete. He couldn't hold on through the contact. Brings up second down. I know at times people think we use it too often, but you've got to be able to throw guys open. And when you read zone, you've got to stick it in there before your receiver gets to the next guy in the zone. Otherwise, you bring him into the play. And that's precisely what allowed that defense to disrupt the pass. Second and 10 now, Wilson. He's got the tight end, Vanan. Now the Seahawks call the second of their three timeouts as the clock will stop with 35 seconds to go in quarter number two. What? 
Again, Wilson. And he finds Penny. And here he'll get it down to the seven. He'll get only two there, and it's second and goal. I know most of the time when the ball's in the air, you're thinking wide receiver, tight end, but running backs, they can be a big part of any passing offense nowadays. Now the Seahawks forced to use their third and final timeout as they stop it with 16 seconds to go in half number one. They'll try again here from the seven on second and goal. Throwing again here, Wilson. And he is going to go down back at the 11-yard line. It's a loss of four on what ought to be the final act of this first half. So plenty of action on the field, but no action right now on the scoreboard, at least as of yet. Nothing, nothing is our score. As we'll send you back over to Orlando with our EA Sports Halftime Report, here's Jonathan Coachman. Okay, right, Brandon. Thanks very much. And welcome in, everyone, to this slimmed-down version of the EA Sports Halftime Report. This one's been a defensive stalemate. No scoring in that first half whatsoever. But a breakthrough can't be too far off. And for the start of the second half, let's get you right back out to Brandon and Charles. All right, Coach, thank you, and we welcome everyone back for quarter number three. So no scoring in our first half. What will the second half bring as we are now back underway? Fielded about a yard deep. And he'll be brought down at the 23, make it the 24-yard line. So the Rams coming back onto the field, their second drive of the game. And we thought this game had the potential to be tight. Maybe not this tight, scoreless, as we start the third quarter. And I love the way you use the word tight. I'm going to take it in a little bit different direction here because it's not just tight on the scoreboard. I think both offenses have been tight in how they've played this game. No one's been loose. No one's been free. They've got to find a way to make some plays, and I don't think you do it if you really tighten everything that you're doing in the game. Golf will lead the Rams up here first and 10 at their own 24. Here's Golf. Going for the deep ball. It got his man complete. And all the way down to the 35. Golf finding Cooks on a big play. 41 yards. Well, you had all halftime to think about what you wanted to do to start the second half. And they came out with a big one. Does that not beg the question? What was happening in the other locker room at halftime? Was that the one play they didn't cover as a possibility? Because they just gave up a big, big game. So that changes things a bit. Here's a first and 10 all the way down at the 35. Goff turns and gives to Gurley. And he won't get much. Maybe a couple down inside the 35 to the 34. They had the huge play last time. Here it is a much smaller gain of two. Tough first half for him, unable to put up the numbers he's used to producing. But with a guy like him, you and I both know it just takes a couple of explosive touches for him to make an impact on this game and on the stat sheet as well. Throwing on second and eight, Goff. Open man, Higby, the tight end. And they do get him down, but not before he's able to slip it inside the five-yard line. Give him 30 yards there. 
They're still looking for their first touchdown of the game, and for a second, I thought they had it right there. Well, looking on the sideline, it's finally good to see nods of approval as a welcome sign of life that this offense needed. Might we see our first touchdown of the game? Here's first and goal. Out of the gun. Gone. And it's caught for a Rams touchdown by Brandon Cooks. Four yards on the touchdown grab as his guys are on the board first here tonight. Well, these two teams battled through a scoreless first half. Finally, a breakthrough here in quarter number three. And I just wonder how that played for both of them psychologically because when you battle through a scoreless first half, now you know that every possession is increasingly crucial. Who can put points on the board, make the other team chase? Wonder if you get a lift and if they get deflated a little bit. Zerline connects on the extra point, and that makes the score 7-0. So that drive, four plays, and the result for the Rams, a touchdown. Now after the touchdown, it's Zerline. He'll kick it away. This is fielded at the goal line. He'll bring it back to just about the 25. Call it the 24-yard line. Here comes the Seahawks offensive unit. They'll have it first to begin the third. And this game was all square at halftime, but now they find themselves down seven following the opening drive touchdown here in the third quarter. And they need to take a good, relaxing, deep breath, don't you think? Because right now they might start to feel like they've got to play catch up here and start matching them point for point, but it's still too early to get there. They can still run their offense, plenty of time to get back in this game. Wilson and the Seahawks take over now, first and 10 at their own 24. They'll start out on the ground with Carson. Back to his own 18. Call it a loss of six on the play, and it'll make this a second and long. Hate to say it, but that play typifies what we've seen from this offense all game long. Yeah, don't you think maybe you flip over your play sheet as the offensive coordinator and see the side that says try something different? <laughs> you know, because this has not worked all game long. They continue to try and get it done. They've got to come up with something a little bit different. Try something special, something they haven't seen. Anything to score a point. Check, check, 59. Let's go, D. Big series right here. We got to step it up. <laughs> They stay on the ground. Again, it's Carson. And that play going absolutely nowhere as he's belted before he could get out of the backfield. They'll wind up losing three yards here. And they're going to be staring at a third and long here. Up front, the struggles continue for this offense among the line. What can they do? Change the play calling? What? I think part of that, yes, changing some of the play calls, some screens, some draws, some misdirection. You want to run any type of a play that will influence these guys to continue to get upfield and find a way to use that against them and slip things in behind them. So some quick passes could work as well. Throwing there, but this pass is going to wind up incomplete. Another drive comes and goes, still nothing on the scoreboard. Yeah, and when the second half comes, you know, it's real easy to get discouraged and wonder if you're ever going to get things started. You just got to fight through it. Got to keep pounding away. Now here's Michael Dixon as the drive goes backwards, so he's on to punt it away. It'll be a 51-yard punt that time. And the Rams will go on offense here for the first and 10. Oh, 
Set to begin their next drive, the Rams offense at the line. Their defense has pitched the shutout. Now they probably need to deliver a little breathing room, maybe make it a two-score game as they've got it first and ten. They run. It's Gurley. And it's been like this all night long. Nowhere to run as they stop him behind the line. And they're not going to get to the line to run another play. So we will switch ends as the third quarter has come to a close. You are watching the NFL on EA Sports. After the loss to start out, here's second and 11. They'll stick to the ground game with Gurley. After getting stuffed on first down, not much better there. Two-yard gain. All right, that's a decent game there, but it hasn't been his best game overall. So I wonder what the mindset is of his team. Do they want him to handle the football and try and close this game out? Or are they going to make an alternative plan and maybe go in a different direction? Uh, I think they need him, and this is his time to shine. Throwing on third, golf. And able to catch it on the left sideline, but they're going to rule him out of bounds. So it'll be incomplete, certainly one they'd like to have back as it brings up fourth down. Critical play in this football game, because if they pick up the first there, that clock keeps rolling. Has to be a little frustrating for them because they know that they pick up a first down there and continue to eat away at the clock really increases their chances of closing this one out. Now they're likely going to have to give the football up and sweat it out on the sideline. On is the punter, Hecker, as he gets this one away. And yeah, that is much too long. That's into the end zone go, for a touchback. Here we go. Here we go. The Seattle now ready to march out of the field. And we've seen drive after drive come up empty for them, and they've yet to dent the scoreboard, yet still right in the middle of a one-score game. So this is where you absolutely have to forget everything that's happened in your previous drives. They don't matter right now. You just mentioned it. One-score game, this drive here can erase all of what happened previously. Wilson, the Seahawks take over now, first and 10 at the 20. From the gun, it's Wilson. He'll run it. And he'll go down at the 26, following a gain of six. Now, that was not a bad scramble there on first down. He didn't force it, nor did he throw it away. He was able to take off, and now he made it a very manageable second and short. From the 26, they'll line up on second and four. Wilson. This one into the hands of Metcalf. And he's able to take this one up to the 35-yard line. That one, a first down pickup of eight. Well, this is where reading defenses and practice time comes into play. You've got to know what you're running versus zone versus man and how to run the proper route. And they just executed that one pretty well. Fourth quarter, down to the final two minutes, and we've got a one-score game. So it's Seahawk football as we march toward a conclusion. And let's see what they've come up with offensively after having time to talk it over. Wilson's pass complete to Van Ed. And able to get this one across the 45 before he's brought down. First down Seattle on a pickup of 13. That gets them the first down, but they've still got to move quickly here. First down now, but that clock rolling. He's back to throw. Flushed out right. And now he's going to use his legs. He'll wind up getting right about four there on the scramble. And it's second down. Now how about that play? He took a possible negative and turned it into positive yardage and slid down to avoid taking a big shot. Excellent job getting down and avoiding the big hit. Wilson trying to urge his guys to go faster and get set at the line. 
He'll look to throw. Underneath pass here to Van Ed. And he's dropped just before the line to gain. Four-yard pickup leaves him with third and one. The Rams go nickel here defensively on third. Back to throw. Open man, it's Van Ed. And he works it past the 30, almost to the 25. First down, Seattle, 16 yards the game there. Partner, they're clearly saving those timeouts, but they still have to work with some urgency to put themselves in the right position. First down now, but the clock continues to move. 26, Mike, 26, Mike. Wilson to throw. Stepping up, he's going to keep it. And this will leave him a yard short. Nice pickup of nine yards on first down. Now the Seahawks call the second of their three timeouts as they stop it with 28 seconds to go in this football game. Now Wilson. Looking middle, and it's incomplete. The rookie from Washington, Taylor Rapp, there to knock that away. This secondary as a unit, they've worked really well together in this one, especially late. A lot of cohesiveness, a lot of communication, and some great athleticism. They're playing so well now, a nickname is sure to follow. They're going to have to name this whole unit soon. They'll look to throw. Escaping the pressure right. He may try and run for this. Now the Seahawks forced to use their third and final timeout as the clock will stop with 18 seconds remaining. The drive continues as they search for a tying touchdown. Here's first and 10. Back to throw. And this ball is caught. It's a touchdown. And now in the final seconds, they're a PAT away from likely getting this thing to overtime. Obviously, the excitement level here is almost a fever pitch. Down one is tempting to go for two. <laughs> I say you go ahead and kick the extra point. You got the home crowd carried into overtime. I'm with you. I do you see some fans though holding up two fingers? Easy now. Yeah, but they're not the ones who have to actually make that call, are they? Jason Myers now for the extra point. The Rams going to go ahead and use the first of their timeouts. That'll leave them with two remaining. We'll be back after this. Jason Myers now for the extra point. And we may very well be headed to overtime. A 10-play drive that time. And it all culminates with a Seattle score. So all even at seven now as they kick it away. This fielded a few yards into the end zone. And with time a factor here late, he'll just take a knee and they'll start things out at the 25. Oh. 
set to begin their next drive. The Rams offense at the line. They have a little bit of time here to get into field goal range. Not much. In a tie game, you don't want to do anything crazy, right? I agree with you on that one. Risk reward, okay? If you go for it, what is the absolute reward on this? But the risk is probably greater. Run the clock out, get to overtime, and try and win it there. All right, we'll see if they do just that. Four quarters, not enough. We're all even, and to overtime we go. How much fun is this for everyone who's watching the game? How much fun is it for us to see this one get an extra period to get settled? And here in overtime, if the team that receives the ball scores a touchdown, it's over. If they don't, we can still have some more football. That's exactly right. If they go down and kick a field goal, the other team gets a possession to either match it or score a touchdown to win the ball game. If both teams kick field goals, the next team to score wins. But if the receiving team throws a pick six or fumbles the ball and gets picked up by the defense and they score, the game is over at that point. So we're right back where we started. All even as the kicks away. This is fielded a couple yards deep. And a good return as he'll be stopped just shy of the 30-yard line. Here come the Seahawks now, set to take over on offense. They control their own destiny here. They have the football in overtime. Obviously, a touchdown would win it. And I think teams around the league are still adjusting to the idea of going downfield, scoring a touchdown, wins the game because they were used to just going downfield and trying to get in field goal range to win a game. Still having to make that transition. Let's face it now. The ones who are doing it best know they need to go down, attack, put the ball in the end zone, and not leave it up to a field goal and give the other team a chance. Yeah, as we said, they control their own destiny now. They'll start on the ground. It's Rashad Penny trying to find a lane, but instead he'll get back to the line of scrimmage and no more. On the stop was Aaron Donald. And as a defensive end, getting off the ball quickly, swarming to the football, making a tackle, that's what we saw right there. Yeah, and that's what their job is. And really, a lot of the time, they have to throttle back a little bit in the run game because you know those defensive ends, they're like in a sprinter stance. They're just headed straight for the quarterback. That was good recognition on that play to hold them to no gain. It's a gain of about three, but it's going to leave them with third and still seven yards to go. Well, so many times we look at a short run and we praise the offense for trying to set the tempo and establish things, but the defensive guys, hey, they just won the battle there. It wasn't a big run given up. They don't always have to absorb the body blows. Sometimes they dish them out themselves. There's Wilson to throw. He can run for it, and he will. And he'll be taken down, but not before he gets into enemy territory. The rushing numbers for Wilson may be down from earlier in his career, but he's still a threat to go, showing it there, picking up the first down. Now that definitely hurts because the mindset is getting a three and out there, and they don't get it done. They give up the scramble and a pickup for a first down. First throw in overtime now for Wilson. They'll roll, and he can't get rid of it. He's taken down. Samson Abukum able to drop him that time for his second sack of the evening. Man, he got in there so quickly, Charles. What could the offense have done to adjust and account for that? But what you're hoping is that you figure out and you see and get a clue that maybe there's going to be some pressure coming at you, and you change the blocking schemes. Maybe you go to max protection. The biggest one is maybe you bring your running back in to try and keep you clean. But in that case, that didn't happen. Zero accountability and a sack resulted. Coming up now on a second and 15 following that sack. Here's Wilson. That's caught by Penny. And he's able to get this one out closer to midfield across the 45. Everyone's got to be able to catch the football. Doesn't matter what position you play, but if you're on offense, be aware, a ball may come your way. Go ahead, go ahead. 
The Rams calling on their nickel set here defensively for third down. We got four. We got four. Out of the gun. Here's Wilson. He may try and run for this. And he'll go down, but not before getting this inside the 30. Big yardage there on the scramble. It gets him a first down. Containing him is becoming a big problem. We've already seen this once earlier on this drive. Yeah, and so now two times this has happened. Do you adjust something? Yeah, I think you do. I think you have to start thinking about your rush lanes. Try not to either get too wide or too narrow. Make sure someone is there waiting for him to take off. So from Rams territory now, it's first and 10 at the 27. This is Carson, and he will lose yardage here to the 31-yard line. That's going to go as a loss of four, and it'll be second down. Came out in a power set, but that only served to put more men in the box. And guess what? If you're going to do that, you've got to win up front, right? Your offensive guys have got to beat the defenders. They lost all leverage on that play. Well, this has been a good march down the field, but now they're stuck looking at a second and 14. They run again with Carson. He winds up getting only a couple there, down to the 29. A minimal gain there on the eighth play of the drive. Well, that didn't appear to be a run blitz. He just darted in once he saw the run develop. That appeared to be a case of see ball, get ball. Now whistles come in. We're going to get a timeout here by the offense. That's their second and last time out here in the overtime session. We'll be back. Ninth play of the drive coming up, and certainly not an easy one on third and long. From the shotgun, Wilson. This is caught. And he'll be taken down, but he does have first down yardage. They're able to convert on third down, and that sets up a first and goal. One overtime, how about two? We need another. We're still even. We'll switch sides and have that second overtime in just a moment. So another third down conversion, and now they've got a first and goal. They'll try to run with Carson, and he'll actually lose a little bit of yardage here. Back to the two. It's a loss of two there, bringing up second down. That's a really alert defense there because they saw the heavy look come in from the offense, countered it with extra linebackers who brought a little bit of speed and heft and able to really make a big-time play for their defense. Back at the two now. Here's second and goal. Wilson. And he's into the end zone for the touchdown and the game winner in OT. special not only did I get four quarters with you in this one I got some overtime a little whipped cream on top look at you trying to make this whole thing palatable I just want you to pay for my meal later hey, you really just wanted four quarters <laughs> what you wanted but how much fun was that we had that type of a game where we got us to overtime and then we get the dramatic ending to finish things off as well what a game
So that'll do it for us, for Charles Davis and all our crew. I'm Brandon Gunn. You've been watching the NFL on EA Sports. It's a win for the Seahawks here as we say so long from Seattle.